This was as big a week as I can remember in news. One sensational story after another. But notice, I didn't say the words most important or impactful stories. And look, we covered it all too. I'm talking about surrounding the story, watching every minute of former President Donald J. Trump's indictment. We were intrigued and incensed by the possibilities of the Ukrainian tapes and of our current president possibly getting bribes from officials and cashing in. We were floored and sickened by the topless trans flashers at the White House, flabbergasted that the pride flag would be hung higher than the American flag on Flag Day. But in the sensation of it all, we missed out on a lot, and you deserve more than that. So I want to use this moment and these minutes to tell you about the stories that really impact your lives, the ones that matter most to you and your family, and maybe your job, like, for example, crime. If it's not affecting your business, you worry about it affecting you, your life, your family. Sadly, we all learned this week that when you take actions to save others, to help others, even heroically, you could still end up in jail. I'm talking about the story of Danny Penny, who was charged with manslaughter for putting a homeless maniac, a lifelong criminal, in a fatal chokehold by mistake, not intentional, on a New York City subway. The three main threats that he repeated over and over was, I'm going to kill you, I'm prepared to go to jail for life, and I'm willing to die. We were all scared. Mr. Neely was yelling in these passengers' faces, and they looked terrified. Right. So he took action. He's a hero, but he's not being treated like that. This week, we also learned that progress, if not reined in, could wreak havoc. Like, for example, the tidal wave threatening to smother society called artificial intelligence, AI. AI can cure diseases, we understand. Can all too often, though, see evil in all that. For example, I wasn't expecting this. A mom on Capitol Hill telling this real-life story, a horror story. Watch. It was my daughter's voice. It was her cries. It was her sobs. It was the way she spoke. I will never be able to shake that voice and the desperate cries for help out of my mind. Pretty amazing, right? Wasn't her. She ended up being okay, but she was almost extorted. And the guy, they know who it is, but they can't catch up with him because he didn't execute the plan. What about the homeless crisis in America affecting all of us, with nearly 600,000 people on the streets in this country? And the governor of the state at the epicenter of it all, California's Governor Gavin Newsom, openly admitted he has no clue how to solve the crisis. Watch. This state has not made progress in the last two decades as it relates to homelessness. Why? Because housing costs are too high, our regulatory thickets are too problematic, localism has been too impactful, meaning people locally are pushing back against new housing starts and construction. He actually thinks the problem is housing costs. If I could only afford that studio apartment, I would live in a pup tent. Are you serious? Meanwhile, this is not just domestic issues being ignored. We have a rising belligerent power in China, harassing our destroyers, buzzing our jets, spying 90 miles off our shores, while the Biden administration chooses to get this, beg for an opportunity to just talk. China's building spy bases. China is going all over the world, undermining America, building up their military, and that's what we need to be focused on. And our Secretary of State's in Beijing. I'm getting Cuban missile vices, uh, crisis vibes all over again. You know, in case you missed it, we have some other news that I find disturbing. That same administration kowtowing up to China, also quietly deciding that our number one Middle East enemy, Iran, who's providing attack drones to our ally, Ukraine, and having their surrogates shooting at our men in Syria, well, quietly, we began diplomatic talks with them in Oman last month. How did we not know this? It looks like they're doing a non-deal deal. Uh, and that they didn't want this out in the, in the public space. Look, the administration's yeah. policy in the Middle East has just been backwards since the beginning. They went back to Barack Obama's time period, right? Make friends with yeah. the Iranians and confront the Gulf Arab states. Uh, not in America's best interest to do that. You think? These issues affect your safety. They, accept your, they affect your future, your family. It affects your country that you love. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.